Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. I'm in a very complimentary mood today. So what we're going to talk about for today's video is why you suck at painting. Now, admittedly, some of you don't suck at painting, um, but you probably do. And that's why you're watching this video. So we're going to talk about some of the common reasons that I see that things go wrong for people when they ask me questions about painting. That's what I'm basing most of this on, mistakes that I've made, mistakes that I've seen, uh, and mistakes that I get a ton of questions about. So without further ado, let's go through the list and talk about why you suck at painting. Today I'm gonna to be working with my lovely assistant, this guitar body. So reason number one, why you suck at painting, is, well, broadly it's patience, but more specifically, improper preparation, all right? there are some things that need to be in place and need to be done correctly in order for a paint job to turn out. First of all, you need a reasonable environment to paint in. A lot of you are painting in ridiculous conditions. So when I hear people saying, I'm, I'm painting in my garage, it's like minus four degrees out. Um, well, you're setting yourself up for failure. So set yourself up for success, paint in warm, dry, not super humid com conditions and Maybe you won't suck so bad at painting. In that same theme, surface preparation. It's not just the conditions of the area around you that matter. It's the conditions of your surface. So, for example, on a piece of wood like this, there are some things that I need to do in order to make it paintable. Yes, I can just shoot paint at it, but it'll look terrible. Let me show you. This piece of wood has one coat of sealer on it and is not properly sanded. So when I spray it, you will see as that dries that it looks very rough, okay? Some of the paint will get absorbed, some will kind of create textures and whatnot, and that's preparation. Surface preparation is key. So depending on your surface, you need to smooth it out, sand it, right? That's how we smooth it out. You need to, on a piece of wood, for example, seal it um, so that the paint doesn't all soak in. You can do that with a sealer. On a really porous piece of wood, which this isn't, you need to grain fill it. If you're using metal, you need a primer that's going to grab onto the metal, otherwise your paint will peel. So surface preparation is key. And now I can show you how uneven this is. There we go. Because it wasn't prepared properly. So some of it is soaking in, some of it is staying glossy, and generally it just doesn't look very good. Preparation. Reason number two why you suck at painting. And, uh, are we on two or three? Anyway, there are lots of reasons. This is very similar. You're going to notice a bit of a theme. But reason number two is rushing. Okay, I get a lot of a lot of questions about, you know, why has my paint job gone wrong? Why is it crazing? Why is it bubbling and cracking, etc.? It's often because of rushing. So there are some rules that you need to follow, and they depend on the type of paint. Often they are on the cans uh, or in the technical data sheets for whatever you're working with. But if you spray your paint uh, at the wrong interval, for example, if you wait the wrong amount of time between coats, then you can have a number of things that go wrong, like one coat shrinking and cracking, or them reacting poorly, or crazing, or delaminating. You know, if you, if you wait too long between coats of gloss and you don't take the appropriate steps in between, one will peel off of the other, depending on the type of paint that you're using. So that's reason number two, three, whatever it is, rushing. The next reason you suck at painting is not sanding enough. Frankly, uh, this comes up all too often. I get a lot of questions about what sanding is required. And in fact, a lot of the questions are, I see that you're sanding in your tutorial. What if I don't want to sand? Well, then you probably don't want a good paint job. It's important that you sand your surface to prepare it before painting in almost all cases. But that's not the only thing you need to do it's usually important that you sand at least once or twice during a paint job. So if you're changing from, you know, one from your, your primer to your main coats, usually you're going to let that dry, sand it smooth to give you a good surface to work on. You can't just paint on this stuff without sanding it and preparing it, like I said, or you end up with that. This is an important step. But even after I've done this, maybe I let that dry for a couple of days and then I sand it and move on to my next coats to make sure that everything's looking smooth. If I'm moving from my paint to my clear coat, I'm usually going to maybe add one coat of clear quickly on top of my paint so that it's sealed in properly. If I've got a metallic or something, 
wait a few days, sand that, and then move on to my next coats. And if I'm trying to get a good gloss, then at the end of the project, I'm going to sand all of that gloss down and polish it up. Sanding is a very important part of painting. It's not fun. It requires patience, but it's necessary in order to get a really good paint job. And um, refusing to sand is one of the reasons you suck at painting. Now, that's a lot of stuff. And you'll have noticed that none of those so far actually involve painting or painting skills. A lot of the job is not the painting itself. It's the stuff that goes into preparing for painting, making sure you're diligent about the steps in between, about the steps after. It's putting in the work, not so much the painting itself. But the painting itself is important too. So the next reason a lot of you suck at painting, wait, I'm singling you out in this one, even though I don't know who's watching this. The next reason you suck at painting is spray patterns, and in particular, lack of overlap, okay? Specifically, and this is kind of two different ones, lack of overlap and spray patterns. You get a lot of people who paint with spray cans in particular. Usually when people have guns, they kind of know what they're doing. But a lot of people who do like this this kind of thing or weird patterns and whatnot. And what you end up with when you do that is these heavy patches and light patches. And so you'll get areas that are dry and dusty looking and areas that stay wet longer and end up glossing up and your paint job ends up wildly uneven. Or if you're going back and forth and trying to get a reasonable pattern, you get people who do this and then they have huge wet patches on the sides where they turn around instead of stopping like they're supposed to, to get a proper coat. So that is important. What weird spray patterns, spray patterns that aren't perfectly even don't result in perfectly even paint jobs and they don't look good. They don't work out well. So that's the next reason. I, I should be wearing a mask, but I need to be able to narrate this. Luckily I'm in a big open space and there's a fan over there. And finally, improper overlap, which ties into this. We'll call this the last one for today. The last reason you suck at painting is you're not overlapping enough. Same kind of issue, but when you're even when you're trying to do this properly, if you spray a coat or spray a line rather, and then you move up too quickly, you end up with light spots, dry spots, areas that aren't coated correctly. What you need to aim for, as I've talked about in many of my tutorials, is whatever pattern you're getting, whatever amount you're spraying on there, you need to move up by half of that. You overlap by 50%. This can is dying. But anyway, you overlap by 50%, and that allows you to move that wet area up your project and keep a nice even coat. If you're confused about that because that wasn't a great explanation and it was a little bit rushed, check out my very old video on how to get an even coat of paint with spray cans. All right, guys, now that I've paid you all so many compliments, we're going to wrap this one up. Those are the reasons that I see very often. Let's call that why you suck at painting. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the stuff that's been discussed here. And if you see questions in the comments below that you know the answers to, go ahead and answer them. You guys are great at helping each other out and I appreciate that too. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see the rest of my tips and tricks that are coming out and my projects. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.